Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at an open source image hosting solution that is kind of a hybrid between Imgur and Pastebin, but is totally not an Imgur clone. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So this is Pixar. And uh, basically this, like I said, is kind of a, an Imgur style uh, image hosting solution where you can, uh, you know, come up here to the top right, uh, upload an image. And then once you do that, you'll be brought to a screen where you can then, you know, view it and uh, share the link to that image, uh, you know, wherever you ha might happen to want to do that, whether it's in an email or in a forum or a, a bulletin board or wherever you happen to want to do that. I kind of feel like this is one of those solutions that the people that use a service like this are also the type of people who might also want to have their own image hosting solution. So that's kind of what I want to show in this video is how to get this set up. I also want to uh, talk a little bit uh, about the, uh, the GitHub repository here. So let's do that just here real quick. Um, so basically here it is, here is the, the, the repository on GitHub. Um, and if we scroll down, of course, you can see everything here is available. You can, you can go in, you can look at the code. It's all open source. Uh, of course, like I said earlier, it is totally not an image, an Imgur clone. Uh, right now, it also says that it's right now also in beta. So there are features that may not work properly, or there are features that are still being implemented. In fact, if we scroll down a little further, we can see some of the features are like uploading and viewing images, user accounts, user roles and permissions, uh, EXIF stripping. I know that's that that kind of thing is important for uh, for the sake of privacy and anonymity. Uh, a lot of people like to have all of that EXIF or metadata stripped from their images. So I like that that is an option in there as well. You've also got the option to keep the original image if you want to do that. Uh, there's support for several different types of images. We can convert images. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of stuff in here. There are some things in here that they are still working on, like ARM support. So this is just an x86 platform at the moment. Uh, there's some other stuff that they're they're working on, like expiring images and that sort of thing. Uh, so basically, they say if you encounter any bugs or oddities, you can open uh, an issue here. There's a link there. Of course, all of this will be linked in the description and down below so that you can kind of take a look at that. Uh, below that, they've got a full Docker Compose that you can use. Uh, basically, I'm using this. I've modified it a little bit, and we will take a look at that here in just a moment. But, uh, but basically, they've even got an API if you wanted to take a look at that. Uh, they said it's usually up to date. Uh, but that's basically what it is. Of course, we can come over to here and uh, see you know a different version of the exact same thing that we had before. I think with that said, we can actually kind of jump into um, kind of the back end stuff as far as uh, Pixar is concerned. So of course we're, we're logged in right now. Um, and, and once we're logged in, we've again got the option to upload an image or come up to the account up here where we can look at my images, settings or log out. We looked at my images already. Uh, those are, are right there. And uh, the next thing we wanna look at is, is settings. It's kind of sparse at this point, but uh, the first setting, the general settings that you're gonna run into here uh, will be to keep the original file. That's a yes or no toggle on and off. Uh, I believe that's where we are there. So we've got the option to add additional users. Currently, there is no way to my knowledge to register a user account, uh, to have somebody else register a user account on their own behalf. So if you want to share this resource with friends or family or whatever, you will have to manually create accounts for each of those uh, extra users. I'm sure that uh, if the developer saw a desire for more people to have the ability to users register or have users have their own ability to register accounts, that that's something they may look into. If that's something you'd like to see, definitely uh, check in with them on their GitHub repository to, to, uh, to show your interest in something like that. 
Uh, below that, we've got roles. Uh, and of course, these are default roles, guest, user, and admin. Uh, there you can create additional roles if you'd like to do that. Um, but I can't really imagine why you might want to do that unless you needed somebody to do moderation or something like that. Uh, and then of course, down here, we've got system settings uh, with a JWT secret, uh, exp uh, the expiry time, bcrypt strength, uh, transcode images on or off. Um, of course, the expiration time on those. Allow images to be edited, yes or no. Uh, the transcode and edit time limit, 10 seconds. And then the uh, transcode edit memory limit of 512 megs. You can change all of those as you need to. Uh, but that's basically it. I, it's, it's very cut and dry at this point. Not a lot of bells and whistles. Um, but again, it is still in beta. So that's definitely something to keep in mind at this point is this still is being built. Uh, but I like it enough that I wanted to share it with you guys again to, to spark some additional uh, interest in this and kind of get the word out that this is it's out there and it's being developed and i really really would love to see this go even further so if you like what you see here definitely go over to the github repository uh give it a star follow it whatever you want to do there uh, but i just wanted to give this uh, project some exposure so now that we've kind of taken a look at the front end and the back end let's take a look at getting this installed so what we're going to do to install this, obviously, we're going to use Docker as our platform, but to make this a little more user friendly, uh, we're going to do this in Portainer. You could obviously do this in command line if you wanted to, but for the sake of simplicity uh, and just uh, a pleasant viewing experience, we're going to use Portainer for this. So here I am. I'm logged into Portainer. I'm going to go to stacks. Now, I already have uh, this in here as a stack. Of course, if you wanted to create your own, you click on add a stack and then copy and paste and adjust as necessary. But I'm just going to open up Pixar here. And we're gonna go into the editor. And then basically at this point, we can see that we've got a version three uh, Docker Compose or stack, whatever nomenclature you wanna use there. We've got some services. The first service is Pixar. Uh, the image will be uh, the, this Rubik's Craft Pixar with the latest tag. Uh, we've got a container name of Pixar. Of course, you can change it if you want to. I don't know why you would, but you could. Below that, we've got a port of 8080 on both sides of the colon. So for the host and the container, those are both 8080. Uh, if you've already got 8080 uh, being used by something else, uh, change the left side of that colon to something that isn't currently in use, and then you can then you can proceed with the rest of this. Uh, the, the environment, we've got some environment variables of like Pixar host. We don't necessarily need that for this. That's why I've left it uh, commented out. The Pixar port of 8080, that is for the inside, the container side of things. So if you needed to change this, you could change it here and here. Make sure those numbers match, but you probably don't need to mess with any of that. Uh, below that, we've got a database host as well as database port, username, password, and database. Uh, change the username and password uh, to something other than Pixar. Again, this is just for demonstrative purposes. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave this all as it is, uh, but just know that you should change those. And it, when you change them here, you're also gonna scroll down and change them down below uh, for the username and password down here as well. The admin password uh, by default is Pixar. So when we get to the, the, the page where we're going to log in for the first time, our username will be admin and our password will be Pixar. Pixar. We'll get to that here in a minute, but I just kind of want to make sure that that's in the video at least a couple of times. So uh, the JWT secret, uh, I just used my password manager and generated a 32 character string uh, with no special characters, just numbers and letters and copied and pasted that in here. The expiration date's one day. That's fine. Uh, the max file size, I, you'll want to, I believe this is in bytes. Uh, so you'll want to adjust that. I think this is set for 128 megs at the moment. Uh, the static front end, uh, this is just fine as it sits. Um, and then we've got a restart policy even less stopped. So basically, uh, if your server reboots or, or something goes wrong, uh, it will make an attempt to restart the container uh, once things have resolved, unless you have manually stopped the container. So that's what that is there for. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans. And any of those ways will help support the channel and give you early access to ad-free content. Uh, below that, we've got a Postgres database uh, and we've got this Pixar underscore Postgres. That will be the host name that we'll use in the uh, host up here. That's This is the same as that. So that's what those are there for. Uh, we're using Postgres version 14 Alpine. Uh, the container name is Pixar under Postgres. Uh, there are environment variables uh, for the database, the username and the password. Again, change those as necessary for security. Again, we've got a restart policy and we've got a volume down here for the database itself. Uh, you could map this uh, to a shared folder if you wanted to, uh, or you could leave this as a volume. That's completely up to you. Uh, if you wanted to map this as a, as a shared folder, a shared path, whatever, uh, you would just put in, you know, uh, path, oops, path uh, to uh, folder 
right? And then of course, put what would actually be that path to where you want to store this. But that's what that is for. Uh, I didn't even spell folder right, so what do I know? Anyway, so once we've got all of this, the way we like it, the way we want it to be set up, uh, what we'll do is we'll just scroll down here, click on the blue button, mine says update, yours will say deploy. So I'm just gonna click that. Uh, we're gonna say, uh, yeah, that's fine. And then here in a moment, this will come back up and we can take a look at that first login process. Okay, so here we are just uh, a couple of seconds later, really. And what we wanna do first is actually look at the logs for the database just to make sure it is up and running. Database system is ready to accept connections, so that's good. That means we're on the right track. So we'll go ahead and back up and then we can do the same thing for Pixar there. Go ahead and open this up. This all looks good. This may take a minute to see something like this. Uh, if you just see the white text up there, just chill for a minute, give it a second to deploy. Once you see all of this log route explorer stuff, you should be good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and back up and we can click the ports right here. And there we go. Now, here's the deal. Uh, obviously, you don't want this on just your, your IP address for your, uh, for your server here. So I used Cloudflare tunnels to, uh, to put together a tunnel for this. I can just go to pixar.dbtech.com and here we are. Uh, of course, I think, yeah, it stored my login there. Uh, but basically, if we log out, <clears throat> Uh, here it says log in, you don't have permissions to upload. Uh, if the developer ever sees this, uh, this please log in should, should be a link to go to the login page. Um, it's just a, it's just a user interface thing, uh, from me doing web development for years and years and years. So this, that should be a link to the login page. So we're going to go ahead and click that again. Our, our, uh, our username will be admin. And then our, our password by default is Pixar. Hey guys, this part of the video is strictly for my Canadian viewers. So if you're not Canadian, uh, skip this video and I'll wait until you're done. Okay. Hopefully everybody who's not Canadian is now uh, somewhere else in the video. If you are Canadian and you're looking to get into self-hosting, but you don't wanna break the bank with new hardware, you should definitely check out the folks over at Refurb Feed. They have a huge selection of always changing inventory of products that have been used and refurbished and are ready to go for your next home lab project. And if you use code DBTECH when you check out, you can get 10% off your next laptop purchase. Be sure to check the description of any of the products you consider purchasing as some of them may not have a hard drive or they may not have a power supply, but all of that will be listed in the product description of each of the products as applicable. So be sure to head over to refurbfeed.com for your next home lab purchase. There we go. So now we're logged in and everything here is ready to go. Uh, and of course, like I said, you can create additional user accounts and that sort of thing for friends and family who might want to use uh, a service like this for whatever their needs happen to be. So uh, that's it, that, that, that's Pixar. That's, that's how easy it is to get Pixar up and running, uh, of course, on a domain name. Of course, like I said, I used Cloudflare Tunnels. I've made a video about that a while back. If you wanna check that out, you could also use Caddy or, or Traffic or Nginx Proxy Manager or whatever you wanna use for your reverse proxy to get it on a domain name, but it's very, very easy to do and doesn't really require any special setting or anything in the Pixar setup to, to work on a domain name and I absolutely Love that. So uh, I think that's basically everything I wanted to cover in this video. Of course, everything will be linked down in the description. Of course, while you're down in the description, uh, there are a few different ways you can support the channel if you want to. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and I will talk to you guys in the next video.